Good morning. Please confirm that you can hear me. You probably don't see me today because for some reason, uh, yeah, something is not working, but I hope you can hear me and we can do the session this way too. Yeah. You, <laughs> you may switch off your camera. <laughs> yes, thank you. And of course you can mute your microphone and I can see you can hear me. Okay. Let me welcome. This is your second session this week, and I will keep introducing the test for uh, convergence. Okay. First of all, I will show you something. Maybe I will just stop sharing and I will share the screen with you on my other laptop. But which one? Mm. I think I can share this with you. Ooh, okay. Do you see do you see my screen? Mm, let me put the chat box. Yes, you can see even the chat box now. Okay. You probably see the nice beautiful red sentence that I add. Okay. Um but what I would like to show you, let's go to modules. Okay. And I will show you in a week. We do have week five. We have week six, which is actually now happening. And we do have week seven. In week, week seven is uh, the last week before midterm two. And in the summary notes, Okay, we do have a section 11.7, which is just the summary of all of the tests. And if I will go, it's the strategy for testing series. And this is a document, it's just two pages. I think we have to mute the microphone. Okay, I did mute everyone. Mm, okay, and if you, you can see, I can move the chat box a little bit. This is first page and this is the second page. That means this small document includes all of the tests of convergence or divergence. All of the tests that we learn or we will still, uh, I will still like introduce. You definitely learned yesterday the test for divergence, which is the, the most important one. Okay. You did learn geometric tests, the geometric property of the series, which is, of course, the test. And today I will, int and I think that, oh no, on the other side is actually telescoping series. That means you also learn this type of formula and the way how we test it. Today I will introduce the integral test. Okay, I will introduce this. And also, let me come back to this page, the P-series test, which is almost like an integral test. And I will try to introduce, which is the next section, 11.4, comparison test. Okay? And you may notice all of these tests that, I'm, that we will talk today, and you did talk yesterday. It's important message are for the series which has a positive terms. If the series is alternating one, we shouldn't use, we shouldn't apply these tests, okay? But we will see. We do have, which we will, we will talk next week, alternating series test, which is specifically, specifically designed for alternating terms. And then we have root ratio, but that's next week, okay? But what I was saying, you, can, you may print or you may like save somewhere this document and you will see how helpful it is when you when you're studying, when you're reviewing the material. Okay, that means it's a really nice document. Okay, you know where, where to find. I will stop sharing and I will share. I will come back to the PowerPoint. Okay. Yes. And we will start the integral test. Um, oh. Um, Somebody is asking, who is asking, uh, 
Aryaman is asking, you can, yeah, you can maybe, um, uh, you can rewatch the video. It's in module, it's in module seven, okay? In the week seven, in the summary notes. It's like a summary of all of the tests. Okay, let me, let me move to my other screen as always, and let's start. Yeah, okay, integral test. That means first of all, I'm really hoping that we know the difference between the sequence and the series. Okay? Before I start, as always, I will ask you something. Uh, do you remember that sequence? One plus one over n to the power of n. Do you know if the sequence is convergent or divergent? It's just a sequence. Okay. Is the sequence. Do you think if this converges or diverges? Oh, it's convergent, yes. And it's when we compute that, yes, it's convergent. When we compute a limit, do you remember what is the limit? Oh, this was on the mid, uh, midweek quiz question. And I did, I did show you last week. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Hamad. It's, it's approaching E. Yeah. That means what this means. If I will, oh, okay, let's maybe do the other question. If I will take a series with the same formula, okay, what do you think? Is this now, is this series, is this convergent or divergent? This. That means now is the series. Because that's the main, yes, that's the main difference between the sequence. It's divergent, yes? Mm -hmm. This is, I can say it's divergent, and I can even say by the test for divergence. Okay? Because we know what test for divergence is telling me. If, the, if I will take just the sequence and compute the limit, and the limit is different than zero, or the limit doesn't exist, then the entire series is divergent. And now I can, that means because if we have the sequence, I can try like list some terms. If I substitute one, I will have one plus one to the power of one, I will have two. If I substitute like this is for n1, if I substitute instead of n2, I will have two plus one half to the power of two. And then if I substitute, if I substitute three, I will have this. Of course, I will not compute and, and so on. But what's happened at almost at infinity, all of the terms, they will be like E, E, right? They, because they are approaching E. Yeah, they are, almo they are almost E. That means what's happened for the sequence, we're saying that it's convergent, but, but for the series, because we, in terms of the sigma, yeah, if we have a sigma, we know that we adding the terms, right? Instead of commas, we do have the addition. And now you can imagine, we like adding a finite number, e plus e plus e plus e. Of course, we accumulating a huge number. That means we don't have nice finite number. We have a huge, we have like, in, like let's say infinity. Yeah, that means always when the limit exists, yeah, that's always the confusing part because the limit exists at infinity of the corresponding sequence and you will say, oh, it's convergent. No, no, no. For the sigma, for the series, it's divergent. That's, me. that's the test for divergence. And I can maybe ask you one more before I introduce the new one. What about this one? The series from one to infinity, let's say n squared plus one, over three n squared plus five. Do you think this is convergent or divergent? Yeah, the, the series n squared plus one over three n squared plus five. Hmm? It's divergent, and why is divergent? By what test? Because probably if we, if we ask for convergence or divergence, we will always ask for the test, to state the test. It's a, 
it's test, yeah, divergence test or test or divergence. Because if I will take this sequence, can you tell me what is the limit at infinity? Just the sequence, because that's how we do it. This, this sequence, this is A sub N. It's approaching one third, yes, thank you. The sequence is approaching one third. And what this means, that we will be keep adding one third plus one third plus one third at the end. That means, of course, this sequence is divergent. Big by the, oh no, by test for divergence, okay. That means always remember, we have the list of tests, we have lots of tests, but always start with the test for divergence. Okay. On the other side, because sometimes we're getting so excited about the test for divergence, uh, did you learn this one yesterday? One over N, that's N. Yeah, this is the harmonic series, okay? And we know that this one is divergent to yeah. That means, but what is, the, what is this showing me? Because what is the limit of this sequence at infinity? Who can tell me this? What is the limit of one over n at infinity? Of course it's zero, but we remember if we're getting zero, we know nothing about convergence. Then is the moment that we have to start a new test. Okay, but this is the specific one. We probably, Dr. Bank was proving this. This one is harmonic and it's divergent. Okay, but it's kind of like a, a proof that even if the limit is zero, it, we still have, we still accumulating a huge number. Because what this means, that at infinity, all of the terms are tiny, zero, almost nothing. And we will be keep adding zero plus zero plus zero, which means we're not really accumulating huge number. However, if we really test this, if we really prove, we actually are. It's, a, it's getting like, it, it's expanding the summation. It's expanding without the bounds. Okay, that's been a little bit of review from last night. And now, if we have, uh, if the limit of the sequence is zero, then we always have to think what to do next. We have to choose another tool. And the next tool could be the integral test. Let's see what it is. Okay, I think this is the test that we just, I just, uh, oh no, actually I didn't talk about this one because you learn also geometric and telescoping, okay? I will not review this. Probably I will run some review session uh, before the test, that's mean we will have. And you do have practice with Kasia, actually. I do have some practice for the geometric series and the telescoping one, okay? Yeah, the partial sum, it's easy, but yes, not always is the easy case to find the uh, limit of the partial sum. That's when we have to find more tests. And then what we will do? We will start with something like that, okay? One over n squared. Uh, of course, that's the expanded form and, oh, and if we will try, because we also remember the partial sum, partial sum is like the sum of the first term, uh, the fir like S sub one, just the first term. And then I will take the sum of uh, two terms, or maybe I will take the sum of three terms and I will keep working. Okay? And I have to realize what numbers I'm getting and try to get the pattern and the formula. But it's not always, it's not always like easy and, and simple process. That means we will skip this, okay? We have to find some more efficient tests. Okay, that means now I have something like that. Okay, for, oh, hang on, did I? Oh, okay, I am, because I'm looking for my screen. Okay, that means what I'm like, Look, it's what I'm showing you here, just the numerical values of the partial sums. That means when we will take five terms, we can see five terms, we will get 1.46. If we will get 10 terms, 1.54, 50, 100, 500, 1,000, 5,000. But we can see 1.6429, 1.6439, 1.6439, 1.6439. That means what do you think? Do you think as soon as I increase the number of terms, 
what is actually this number going? It, is this number like increasing without a bounce? I mean, or actually it's approaching a finite number? Yeah, you can even check on the calculator, yes? You can check like 100 terms, 500 terms, and you can add them together. And actually they are approaching, yeah, it's approaching a finite number, thank you. It's actually approaching 1.64. Okay. That means this is, of course, you. that's not a proper proof because proper proof we have to do a little bit different way, but at least based on numerical values, we can see that, oh, probably this series is convergent. It's convergent to 1.64 if I will, like, keep adding infinitely many terms. Okay, but now let's see how we can prove it. That means it's definitely convergent. Now let's look at, it's not a geometric series, but like kind of like graphical explanation. That's what I mean by geometric argument. So what we will do, we will take a function, the corresponding function, one over x squared, okay? I will minimize this. And this is kind of like a, um, a recall of section 7.8, improper integrals. Okay. It's been taking a function 1 over x squared and uh, drawing a rectangle of the length at the bottom 1. Yeah, that's mean by 1, I'm drawing the rectangles. So I mean, if I will write this um, integral, and let's say I will, I will ignore the first one, starting from 1 to infinity, not 8, infinity, okay, dx. Do you Remember, do you remember that limit, that, I mean, that integral from section 7.8? Yeah, the integral, I think, was finite, was uh, convergent and was convergent to 1. That's mean what this means. If I will simply, because integral means the area of entire, of everything which is below the curve, okay? Not only the rectangles, okay? That means the area below since the curve is positive, I can call the area even if it's infinity. The area under the curve, it's finite, it's one. Yeah? We remember the function is like decreasing, is approaching zero, is approaching zero fast enough to have the finite number. That means one more time, everything, even the white spots underneath the curve, it's giving me one, it's convergent, yeah? it's finite. That means now, if I will take just these rectangles, the areas of these rectangles, which is base times the height, one times the value for two, which is one half squared, one and then times one third squared. That's the areas. And these areas, including the first one, but don't worry for the first one, uh, are giving, that's my, actually, that's my infinite series. Yeah, that we can see, that's the base of the rectangle, that's the height, and the sum of all of the rectangles uh, actually are my infinite series. And what is the point? The point is to compare, okay, to compare with the integral. Because this, okay, this represents just, just this golden part, just the, just the rectangles. And I know Okay, and I can maybe, I, we don't, if I throw away one finite term, doesn't matter. That's because we can see we're starting from one. And now, on the other side, I do have my integral, which integral represents everything. Yeah, and it's finite, one, everything under the curve. And that means I do have two sides. I have this side and I have this side. And I just need, I just need the relation this way or this way it's gre greater or smaller can you tell me which one which part is smaller just the, this is just the rectangles just the rectangles or everything under the curve yeah that's which side the right hand side it's bigger or the left hand side is bigger oh Integral represents everything. Yeah, the right hand side. Integral represents everything, like everything under the curve. Okay, that means definitely my integral is bigger than this one. Yeah, yeah. That means now you remember we even have in section 7.8 the comparison. 
Like you can imagine that I this part again, because it will be important for the next test. This part, it's convergent, which means it's finite. Everything what is smaller must be convergent. We may like imagine, let's say, imagine a box, like, I don't know, the shoe box, box. It's, it's finite, it's, it's convergent. It's like we have limits. I can't put more stuff than the, 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 the dimension of the, of, the, of the box. That means everything what I can fit inside, it's also limited, convergent. Yeah, that means this is also the, the in, uh, relationship, the inequality, it's also important, direction of the inequality. That means that's how we can do. If we have an infinite series and we don't know how to prove it, and, but we see the formula, oh, it's really nice formula for integration. I can create my uh, like improper integral. I can, I can integrate and check if it's convergent. That means if it is convergent, the corresponding series is convergent. And that's it. And the same way works for divergent, but I can show you the graphical explanation. And that's everything. Of course, it's a little bit time consuming because we have to integrate. Yeah? And sometimes maybe we have to even use some different methods of integration. Integration maybe by parts, maybe integration by, <clears throat> by partial fraction decomposition. Yeah? Depends. But we know how to integrate. That means it's really helpful test. One thing that this test is not doing is it will not really give me, like, if, let's say, we talk about convergence, we will not get exact value, like, what this series is convergent to. Because please remember, even if the integral converges to one, again, one is everything underneath. The, the golden boxes, the rectangles, are a little bit less. Okay, a little bit less. That means what's happened, uh, we know that it's convergent, but we don't know exactly what, the, what numbers converges to. But we don't have to. It's strong and good information if we determine convergence or divergence. And I do have... Oh, yeah, I just add that one. Okay, that means this is this. Because when I... Um, let me, oh yeah, that's everything. Oh, okay. I think this is just the summary. We can see that the integral is one, of course, but the rectangles are a little bit less. I switch the side, that means I have this way. And we do see that we can compare, okay? You probably ah because I'm adding like I'm just adding uh, I am adding that one but because that that one is the difference but we don't really have to look at this we can even I just said we can we can see yeah you know, that this is one this is part of my it is part uh, the infinite series is the part right because. If I expand, I will have one, and then I will have plus um, four, but I can write this way, and I can have three to the power of two, and so on. And since I was removing that one, but now I am putting this, I will also put on this side, yeah, just to have. But we can definitely know that this series is less. Okay, it's less than two. And we even know it's 1.64 based on this numerical values. Okay. Okay, we do have a question from uh, Ari, Aria, 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 man, Aria, let's say Aria. Uh, how do we know that the integral test is the best one to use for this question? Okay, this is probably the typical question. We don't know. We really have to like, have the list of all of the tests in front of us and test and start testing, okay? I will always start with the test for divergence, yeah? I show the screen with you, that means you know where to find the summary of all of the tests. If the test for divergence doesn't work, because in this case, it's not working, the limit at infinity of one over n squared is zero. Zero is telling me nothing, right? I have to uh, check that test, I mean check, I did use it and it's not working. I have to keep trying different. And then 
The next thing you will say, okay, geometric series. This is not a geometric, we can recognize right away because the geometric uh, formula keeps n in the exponent. I will just write for you. For example, if we will have one half to the power of n, that's the geometric. If you will see n, yeah, the, quant the, the, the quantity n, uh, placed in the exponent only, that's the geometric. This one is not exponent, yeah? n is in the light base. Actually, it's the power function. Okay, that means that's the geometric. Then you will go through the geometric. You will find the first term, you will find the common ratio. Based on the common ratio, you will know if it's divergent or convergent. If it is convergent, uh, you will use the formula for the sum. Yeah? Also, the next thing is the telescoping that you learned last week, uh, um, yesterday, yesterday. Telescoping is um, like a difference, the method of difference. That means you will see the difference between two terms similar terms because they will yeah that means it's of course maybe it's a little bit too soon to ask this question probably by practicing which i will recommend to practice every day every day you do have a list like for for each summary notes includes list of uh, series please try to solve all of them yeah i did type the typical problems and i also type the solution that means check the summary notes yeah for each, like from 11.1 to 11.7, because seven is the summer. Okay, and then maybe next week we will try to like, I will give you the list of series and we will see which test is the best, but we need to practice. Okay, but, but let's yeah, let's come back. Of course, everything what I'm tell, telling about the integral, because this is actually the integral test. As soon as we use the integral, we comparing with the integral, that's the integral test. But you, you don't have to really know how to prove it again, right? I'm I am just trying to prove it for you, to, to convince you. But you have to use it as a tool. Okay, but it's just a few important things. In order to use the, in the corresponding integral, of course, integral test, the, the function, the formula must be, uh, and we have few things must be positive all of the terms they have to be positive and that function must be continuous function okay and of course limit is is zero that's when we end decreasing okay the function must be decreasing I, I i will have this list we have three things function must be continuous function because we will be integrating and we can't really integrate i mean we can still integrate at some discontinuity but no we want positive function, continuous function, and decreasing. Okay, then we can use integral test. Okay, but let me just prove it that divergence also work, and then we will practice. Oh yeah, I have just a summary. And one interesting information, because we know again, we know again that these terms are approaching 164, but even more like, Interesting information is we do have a mathematician, of course, everybody knows Leonard. I pronounce Euler because it's like think German pronunciation. What he discovered when he like yeah, he was keep adding the terms, not even, not even like 1.64, he discovered that the terms are creating a number pi squared over six. Can you imagine this? Like and you can probably square pi value and divide by six, you will get around 1.64, but probably more decimals, more uh, accurate. Yeah, that means this is just for your information, for the, the fun, <laughs> fun information. Yeah, that means it's interesting how, how he even realized that these numbers are creating pi squared over six, since pi is such a like complicated number. Yeah, okay, that means just to know. That means one over n squared is quite quite a series. <laughs> okay, now let's take this one. One over similar, similar, but a little bit different. One over square root of n. One over square root of n, of course, looks like that. Okay. And I will start with the numerical values, which means I will show you the partial sums, like adding. First, I mean two terms, three terms, four terms, and so on. Let's see. And look at this. 
adding five terms, 3.2, 10 terms, 5, 50, 12, 1,061, 5,139. That's mean what we actually see, adding all of these ter like, uh, terms, creating a partial sum, actually these numbers are getting bigger and bigger. That means they don't really approach one finite number. Yeah? They, that means we can definitely, based on the numbers, we can say is divergent. And it's quite similar, but I mean the formula, one over square root of n, comparing to one over n squared. Yeah, but this one is divergent. And let's look at the behavior of the, like the, the corresponding integral and the rectangles. I mean the, the same, uh, one over square root of x, it's almost the same like one over x. Yeah, that means it's function, it's still like, it's still hyperbola. Or one over x squared, it's, it's we can see function is positive, it's definitely continuous function and it's decreasing. The only thing is, again, we remember from section 7.8, it's decreasing not fast enough. This formula, it's approaching zero. Yeah? It's approaching zero at infinity, but it's, it's approaching zero really slowly. Yeah? That's probably the reason that we're still accumulating a huge number. Okay, as we can nicely see, I can take a corresponding integral, one over square root of x from one to infinity. Okay? And we know, we know based on comparison, because we did have comparison tests, uh, I mean, we don't even have to uh, compare. Uh, we remember, I can even evaluate this, but we remember that this is divergent. Yeah? Again, I, I am referring to the section 7.8. It's divergent. I will not recall any other like properties. It's divergent, which means it's expanding without the bounds. Now, when I compare my rectangles, but now I took the, the left-hand side. That area is just the um, one, which is the base, times the height. But height is one over square root of one. And then again, one over square root of two, three, four, and so on. That's mean adding all of these rectangles, I'm creating my series. Okay. And now I'm trying to compare with the corresponding integral. We know that integral is divergent. But do you think, can you give me the relationship, the direction of the inequality? It's this way or this way? We know that integral means just the area under the curve. That means which one is bigger, the area under the curve or the rectangles? The left, in this case, is the left. Mm -hmm. Because we can see the, the area, it's, of course, below the curve, and rectangles are sticking out. And now our comparison test, if something is huge, because we know this is infinity, huge, everything what is bigger must be also huge, must be also infinity, yeah. divergent. That means that's another, is just proving that the divergence also works. Okay, that, mean that was my proof, no more proofs. I do have some... Oh yeah, I did, because we remember if we have this type of function, one over x, and is x is taken to the power of p, based on that p value, if the p is less than one, we always have divergence. Yeah, that's, that's, it's section 7.8. But we don't even have to integrate, which we can, of course, integrate so easily is the power function, but we know that. Okay, that means since this is divergent, uh, oh, our corresponding series is also divergent. And now let's look at the summary page for the integral test. And as I said, in order to use the integral test, yeah, we will integrate, uh, function must be continuous function, positive and decreasing. If we're not satisfying this condition, we're not allowed to use integral test. Okay, and then as simple as this is, we will look at the integral, probably integrate and check convergence. If it's convergent, then the series is convergent. 
and don't worry for the proof don't worry for all of these rectangles i was just showing you that this works okay and then when we integrate and get the divergence the corresponding series is divergent okay? nice and simple test okay? but make sure that always you we check this uh, uh, condition okay i think let's maybe try uh, oh, hang on, let me come back because you can see I did start, I always say from the, from one to infinity, from one to infinity. But if we, if we, for example, have function that will satisfy this condition, like positive or decreasing, because sometimes we may have a function that is, let's say is increasing and then suddenly is decreasing at infinity. Yeah, that's when we do have a moment, let's say like four. That means this function definitely satisfies my condition, but starting from four. That means this is still fine. If I skip a few finite terms, this is not affecting my infinity. I still have to deal and, and manage my infinity. And that means please remember, it's still fine. And I'm just trying to, yeah, show you that's actually a good function because x minus three squared, right? the asymptote is actually, it's not zero, it's actually three. That means everything, everything starts from three. We do have this continuity at three, but we can just start analyzing everything from three and it's perfectly fine. Okay. Mm, yeah, that's when we just call ultimately decreasing that at some point. You know, we don't have to have it at one. We don't have to start at one. Okay, you know everything. Um, as I said, because we really like this to be your true and false question, which is so like nice and easy, but also so like important. And as I said, we do compare, right? That's we do have an integral. We have corresponding series, but we know that they are not, we can compare. We can say, oh, this is convergent and this is convergent. But we can't say that they are exactly the same because you remember the rectangles. Rectangles represents the series and the integral actually is um, defined, by, but um, defined by the area under the curve. Okay? That means it's like entire area. They never the same. That's my point. Okay? We comparing, we, we definitely like trying to compare them, but they are not the same. They have different values. Please remember, that means if you will have true and false question like that, you can simply say no, they are not the same. Okay, and maybe we can solve one question. Okay, because integral, since we know how to integrate, think we like, yeah, we can, uh, like, yeah, we, you, you know how, you can definitely like test uh, the integral test on your own. Yeah, that we let's just do this together. And then I will go to the, com because we still have comparison test for this session. Okay, let me test the series one over n squared plus one for convergence or divergence. That we can see right away, it's really nice function. And first of all, I will, okay, I will rewrite this as a function, x squared plus one, one over x squared plus one. And we can definitely see that this function is positive function starting from one to infinity. Yeah? It's definitely continuous function. Okay. And it's definitely decreasing. We may try, we may try to, because we can see as soon as I create another term, n plus one, it will be smaller. Yeah? We remember the good way to prove the decreasing is to find the derivative. Right? And if we will see that the first derivative is negative, this means that function is decreasing on the entire interval. Okay? If we're not sure, we can always find, but this one is so obvious. Okay, that means this just means that we can apply the integral test. And I can try to create an integral from one to infinity of this formula, okay? And this is improper integral, which means I will replace infinity with t, and t goes to the infinity, okay? 
And can you remind me, what is the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1? Who can tell me this? Do you remember the limits from 1 to t? Oh, it's just inverse tangent of x. Yeah, I think we do, we do remember. And now we can compute the limit at infinity and then inverse tangent of t minus inverse tangent at one. Okay, what is how inverse tangent behaves at infinity? Yeah, Brandon, ta uh, arc tangent, that's good. Do you know how inverse tangent behaves at infinity? Do you remember the graph? Okay, maybe you can give me, it's pi, oh, it's pi over two. And do you, yeah, really good, mm -hmm, because we have this. And tangent for what angle is one? Tangent for what angle is one? Uh, oh, you know your unit circle, pi over, yes, I know that you're typing. Okay, that's we actually see really nice finite numbers. Wow, the integral is convergent. My writing, it's convergent. That means, remember, we're not really using this. We know, I mean, we did use to get that conclusion, but we can definitely, we can definitely say that this infinite series is convergent, convergent by IT, integral test. Oh, no, no, changing the slide, okay? That's mean, please, yeah, please do this way. And I, as I said, it, integral test is relatively easy because if as soon as you know how to integrate, you can use it. You can always use it. Okay. Okay. Let's keep moving. That's mean, this is the way to apply the integral test. And I did type for you the solution. That means you can, you can check. And I do have another one, but we will, we will skip this one. I can definitely tell you that function is positive, continuous, and decreasing, okay? The only thing is, when we see natural log, we will, I will prefer if this is free, because for the natural log function, uh, like everything, start, like all of the conditions starts from E value, okay? That means I shouldn't even have one, because what is the value ln of one? Yeah, ln of one is a zero. That means it's not safe to have one. That means we're just skipping, but that's, that's not really the, the, the thing. But what I'm saying is you will probably easily integrate this function. Yeah, that means ln of n over n, actually not n, ln of x over x dx, let's say from three. It's not affecting my... Uh, we know how to nicely integrate. It's a nice u substitution. That's when you can definitely do it. Yeah. As you can see, if I have to answer this question, like how do we know when to use? As soon as you know how to integrate the formula, you may integrate. Yeah. Okay. I will not go through because oh, I think I that I type. I didn't type the solution, but you can you can definitely do it. Oh yes, I did. Okay, I did integrate, and actually the integral is divergent. If the integral is divergent, the infinite series is divergent. Ah. Mm. Okay, now, uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, now we have this formula, which is also a typical formula for the improper integrals. One over x to the power of p, or in this case, is the series is n. One over n to the power of p. That we have to find out uh, for what values, yeah, for what values of p, uh, this integral is convergent. And I will not, because I do have a proof, or maybe I remove the page, but the proof is too complicated. I will just tell you the finite conclusion, final answer, which actually, it's exactly the same again, like from uh, section 
I mean, I do you remember this? And that's what we're doing. Now we're comparing with the integral. That means I'm just simply, I will just simply be using the same, the same condition, the same properties. Okay? If P is less than one, oh, less than one or equal to one, it's always divergence. If it's greater than one, the whole function is, the whole integral is convergent, which of course the corresponding series is convergent. That means what we call, we call like a P series test, which you saw on my summary notes. However, some of the mathematicians, they don't like calling like that because they still think it's the, in, because it is actually, no, it's the integral test. Integral test. That means even if you call integral test or the P series test, that's fine. But remember, and it's so helpful to, to know this. But also, it's so important, it's only for that part. I mean, for, for that, for it's, we can apply this only for this kind of function. As soon as we like adding more formulas, like n plus 1, no, we can't. We, the P-series test is just for, one, for this one single form. Okay? 1 over n to the power of the value. Okay? That's when we did learn integral test and theoretically the P-series test, but it's the same thing because we're proving through the integral. Okay, and can you really tell me this exercise four and five? Uh, determine whether the series one over n cube is convergent or divergent. What do you think? Is this convergent or divergent? <laughs> of course it's convergent because and uh, I can say is convergent because the p value is three greater than one. And I can say p series test or integral test. Yeah. And what about five? One over n to the power of one third. Is convergent or divergent? Of course it's divergent because the p-value is actually less than one. Excellent, okay. Okay, so now what we have, we do have like 15 minutes. Hopefully we can, I can introduce, we will skip this one. It's nice to integrate. You can do the work. Uh, oh, maybe this one you can tell me. What do you think? Determine whether the series is convergent or divergent. Summation from one to infinity, n or n plus two, n plus over n plus one. Huh? I'm kind of testing you. It's divergent, but why is divergent? It's definitely divergent. Divergent. By what test? Oh, come on, everybody can see. As soon as we see the series, we always have to start with the test for divergence. This limit, yes, thank you. Oh, you. It's test for divergence because the limit of the sequence is different than zero. Which that one means that we will be keep adding one plus one plus one plus one, of course, divergence. Good, just a test. Okay, that's me now. Let's see. Comparison tests. Um, you probably even like talking about the integral test. I did mention a few times, oh, we comparing, comparing. That means this is actually something what we will do. But for this, for the comparison test, we will not really compare our series with the integral because that's integral, uh, integral test. We will compare with different series, with the known easy series. And let's see. Oh, okay. I didn't want to show you my entire slide, but it's okay. Okay, for example, let's consider this. Infinite series, one over two to the power of n plus one. That's what, if I will see this, I will think, oh, it's almost, almost like the geometric one. But that one is not really helpful. Yeah, because the, we can't really have addition. Oh no, no, no! That's then not the geomet That's not the geometric. But since it's really similar to the geometric, I can 
state the geometric one over two to the power of n. Okay, and this one is nice and easy. Is the geometric the common ratio is one half? It's less than one. It's convergent, and we even know the sum, but we will not. Uh, yeah, we will not compute the sum at the moment. I'm just giving you. You can try. That means this is yeah. That's that's geometric. It's convergent, and now what we're doing? With I'm taking the formula from the my unknown my original series, and I'm taking this one. And the relationship, again, is important. I suppose to ask you for the inequality, but okay. And we can see, we have the same fractions. This has a little bit small, a bigger denominator. If the denominator is bigger, the whole fraction is smaller. Okay, that means this is, that's the relation, perfect. The same relation will be for the addition of the terms, of the sum of the terms. And we know that this is definitely convergent, right? Everything what is smaller, we just, yeah, we just like uh, practice this. Everything what is smaller is also convergent. And that's it. That means that's actually the comparison test. In order to compare, uh, you saw this on the summary notes, all of the terms, they have to be positive. That means we have to, we can compare, we can use the comparison, but we're always dealing with the positive terms because otherwise, if it's alternation, we will, we will mess up our inequality. Okay, that means this is convergent. The only thing is, you may notice, this is something like, I took part of this formula, but the blue formula is kind of like a new. That means in order to compare, we have to find the formula that we're comparing with. Okay, that means that's, yeah, that's the only extra job for us. Okay, that means now let's see. Mm. Oh yeah, I'm just repeating what, what, I, what we said. This is, this is because the sum was one, this is less than one, it's convergent. Yeah, but we can see only for positive terms. Okay. Mm. Okay, and this is actually, that's the test. If we have the infinite series A sub n, and the B sub n will be the new one. Okay, the new one that we, we find, like we have to create what to compare with. Okay, and of course the terms are positive, and now the same thing like for the in, improper integrals. If my new series is convergent, and my original one is, has less, the terms are less, that means everything what is smaller. Yeah, I can say this way. If B sub N is convergent, everything what is smaller is also convergent. If B sub N is divergent, and everything what is bigger, it's also divergent. That means that's the only way to use the comparison. If something is not right, like convergence and divergence maybe it's switched or the inequality, then we're not really allowed to compare, okay? Mm. And now I did list like few uh, typical formulas, typical series that we will compare with. That means always when we see uh, some like I did, I did this one, right? I did the geometric. If, if you see something similar to the geometric one, you may remove all of the terms that you don't like it, create a nice geometric one, get, get your answer and compare. Always we can compare with the P-series, which actually the P-series test will be kind of like the conclusion of this because the rational functions, we can always take uh, leading term from the nino, don, uh, denominator and leading term from the numerator and create a p-series. Yeah, that means this is like a few ways to compare. Again, when you check section 11.4, the summary notes, I did have a list of few formulas and I did solve for you. That means please solve them, even today. Oh, I was writing before the session. Okay, but okay, let's look at the solution. That we can, or maybe let's ignore the solution for now. Let's look at this formula. Yeah. Determine whether the given series is convergent or divergent. Five, 
over 2n squared plus 4n plus 3. That means what we will do, this is rational function, I will try to compare. That means this is my formula, and I'm, taking, I'm keeping 5, and in the denominator I am just taking a leading term. Okay, and now what I see, let's analyze this blue circle, blue new formula. I mean, the, this one is new, we, we just created. Five over two is constant. Okay, then I only have one over n squared. My series one over n squared, of course, is convergent. We just learn this from the P test or even the integration. Uh, it's convergent and do you think you okay to put the inequality this way? Looking at the blue circle and let's maybe say the original one was green. Because we can see the top are different, the same. Yeah? And denominator is slightly bigger in my green uh, formula. Yeah? That means if the denominator is bigger, the whole fraction is smaller. And perfect. My right hand side is convergent. Everything what is smaller, less than, it's convergent by direct comparison test. And we're comparing with 1 over n squared. Yeah, that means this is the way to do it. Okay, let's see if I have, because I wanted to. Oh, as always, I have the notes that if you, if, if some few finite numbers are not working for us, uh, and you, you may always start from, not from one, you can always start from like um, different values, but it's not affecting our convergence. Oh, again, I did solve it. Okay, that's mean this is, don't look at the slide, let's look at from the, from the beginning. That's the formula ln of n over n. Yeah? We know that we can use the integral test, we can integrate and we got divergence. But let's also check, we can compare. That's what I will do. I will take ln of n over n, the formula, and now I would like to tell you that natural log of n, you may always try to compare with one because we can see the natural log, log of n function looks like that. One is a constant function. Let me put a little bit lower, right? We know the value, it's e. That means starting from e, always the ln is above, it's greater. That means that's what I did. I, keep, I kept n from my formula, but ln of n, I replace with one. And since I know that ln of n is greater than one, because if the numerator is greater, then the whole fraction is greater. But everything starts, of course, I can't put e, the first integer after e is free. That means this relation works starting from free. And it's okay, it's okay, this is just the... Okay, and now it's my comparison, this is, Harmonic, of course, series, we remember, we know that it's divergent, or even I can apply the P-series test. Everything what is bigger must be divergent. Okay? Uh, okay. Yeah, nice comparison. Okay. Uh, we may have a problem, like, yeah, we, we can see, we, have, we may have a problem if uh, we have like convergence, but our original formula is greater, that means we don't know, or if we have divergence and our formula is smaller, then we can't really apply direct comparison. But let's see, you know, mathematicians, they will not leave it like that, they will do something. Oh, no, 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 let me, why, that's too much. Let me delete this. <laughs> I don't know why I kept everything. Okay, because I would like to solve with you. Okay, that's what we have. Uh, look at this, look at this formula. It's extremely similar that I start with, okay? Uh, one over two to the n minus one. And we definitely see that we can compare with this, excellent. But in this case, my original um, series terms 
of the series actually are uh, because the denominator is smaller, the whole fraction is bigger. Mm -hmm. Too fast. Okay, that's what we can see. I can't really compare because we know that this formula, okay, starting from this one is con convergent. That means this is convergent. If I, of course, add the sigma. Something that is bigger, I don't know, because convergent means the finite number. Something that is bigger could be convergent, but could be also divergent. Right? As we can see, direct comparison test actually is not working. Okay, it doesn't work in this case. That's what we will do. We do because we we still don't want to leave this beautiful comparison. Yeah, because it's so similar and something we have to use it. Something. That means what we do. We do have something like limit comparison test. Okay, we do have a limit comparison test. We will still use our formula, which means my d sub n yeah, it's the new it's the new formula or if we like the seeds yeah we will use it. and okay i do have yeah i do have like a summary of the limit comparison but i would like kind of like you determine how we will use the limit um, because it sometimes could be confusing but it, yeah it's not really okay that means, yeah. let's i will ask you a few limits because I would like to, like, do you remember x? Let's, let's just see the functions. Limit, everything is limited at infinity, okay? Limits at infinity. That means, for example, do you remember maybe e to the power of x over ln of x? Like, what is this uh, limit, like, right away? Do you remember? We can compare the growing rates, the relative growing rates. Whichever function grows faster, Okay, and wherever is placed, that's my answer. That means which function grows faster at infinity? E to the x? Or, uh, of course, e to the x grows faster, yes. That means if the numerator is winning, it's always infinity. But this is giving me this relation. Okay, great. Now, if um, I can, let's say, x squared and e to the x. Okay, which function grows faster? E to x squared or e to the x? E to the x or the power function? Of course, e to the x is extremely fast function. And then if the denominator is winning, always zero. Okay, great. Now, one more limited infinity. And let's say 2x squared plus x minus 1 over 6x squared minus x plus 5. Do you think you can tell me that limit? It's limited infinity of the rational function. Yeah, such a nice and easy function. It's, yeah, it's just the ratio of the, because the degree is the same, it's just the ratio of, thank you, mm -hmm, of the leading coefficients. Excellent. But now, okay, yes, now is the moment, important message. If we're getting a finite number, this means that none of the function is winning. Zero will tell me that denominator is winning. Infinity will tell me that numerator is winning. Okay, but when we're getting a finite number, we know that both of the functions behave the same. It is some ratio between them, but no, they behave the same. I can possibly copy this. That means this function we can compare with this one, of course, at infinity. Okay. Oh, no, 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 too fast. Okay. That we can see this is what this means, that they, they behave the same. That's me now. What we will do, we will come, that's my limit. I have the summary on the other side, on the other side, but I will compute a limit at infinity of the ratio my original formula over the new one okay the original one over the new one and what i want to see i would like to see a finite number different than zero like positive let's say even positive because we greater than zero okay 
That means I would like to, because everything is at positive infinity, the terms are positive, that means just a positive number. I would like to get a finite number, which is that, the, case, the, the last case. If we getting a finite number, we will know that both of the formulas behaves the same. Huh. And now, if B sub N is convergent, then A sub N must be convergent. Yeah, we can see that's me. That's another way to use the comparison. But also, if let's say B sub N is divergent, then A sub N is also divergent because they behave the same. A sub N is comparable to B sub N because of that finite number. Okay, that means this is the limit comparison test. Let's look at my next page. And that's the limit comparison test. Again, A sub N and B sub N are the uh, uh, series with the positive terms. And we create, we computing that limit and we're looking for the finite number. And then we can say both series are convergent or both series are divergent. Yeah. Depends, uh, depends of the known one. Yeah, that means please be not worried to give this conclusion, oh, it's divergent or convergent because of the same answer. But yes, they are comparable. That means they behave the same because the, the limit at infinity is the finite number. And now all, we always have here, we always have a little bit of like uh, confusion. Oh, that's the whole math and that's the beauty of the math. That means what we have. Uh, we, like we, we, all of the instructors, we decided that we will use the comparison test like this, we will tell students that we will use the test if you're getting a finite positive number. That means if you will get like, let's say zero, or if you will get infinity, then we will say, no, the test doesn't work. Okay, the test, the limit comparison test is not working. But what you can do, you may still try to make some conclusion. Uh, uh, why does direct comparison test work? Oh no, it's okay. Aria is asking me. I have to, you have to investigate this. Yeah, it's working because of that. If the limit at infinity is the finite number, the formulas behave the same. And that's it. Yeah. They behave the same. That means if one is convergent, the other one has to be convergent. If one's divergent, the other one has to be divergent. Yeah? That's the. Okay, but let me come back to this one. You may probably pause the video later or look at the slides and try to think about this. Because when you will get this limit and the answer will be zero, yeah, we know what zero means. Zero means that denominator is winning. That means denominator is greater. And if my B sub N is convergent, everything what is smaller is also convergent. That we have to be extremely careful if we use, if you decide to use the limit comparison, if the answer is zero or infinity. Because if it's const, if it's the finite number, always works, always. You can conclude convergence, divergence. But if it's zero, you can only compare this way. Or if it's infinity, this is telling me that my numerator is winning. Then if B sub N is divergent, everything what is bigger is also divergent. That means you may use this as a special case if you get this concept, but if it's constant number, always works. Yeah? Exactly, the direct comparison didn't work because you remember, that means that's the reason that I was explaining that we do have another, because two, and these formulas, this is actually greater. And my right-hand side is convergent. That means the direct comparison, it's not working. But let's take this and let's, yeah, let's look, let's do the limit. That we can see, again, direct comparison test is not working. Let's try the limit comparison test. We know what we're comparing with. 1 over 2 to the n. Unfortunately, that's the relation. But at least I can try the limit. Limit at infinity of A sub n over B sub n 
limit at infinity and this is my original formula this is the new one dividing by fractions means multiplying by a reciprocal and i will flip this and can you tell me what is this limit at infinity? I can just write it nicely, two to the n over two to the n minus one. Mm, we do have the same type of function, two to the n, two to the n. That means it's simply one, x, one, thank you. Thank you, Brandon. And it's positive finite number. That means, yes, I can say that if this was convergent, I will remove the inequality, the inequality. I will just put that they behaves the same. Okay, this is, I can maybe write everything because it's convergent by limit comparison test. And this is my proof. The limit is one, okay? That we can see that's the way to, to use it. That means you may try again uh, section 11.4, the summary notes, includes lots of examples and I did solve for you. You have the full solution and you may try to like start comparing and you will like it because as soon as you know what to compare with, it's so fast and so efficient. Yeah? Like integral test is a little bit longer. Yeah? Okay, that means do I have, mm, let's maybe do this one as a last example. Okay, today, and we will finish the session. I know it's a little bit longer, but you're doing really, really good. <laughs> okay, determine whether the given series is convergent or divergent. Natural log of n over n cube. Okay, I, oh, my writing, ln of n over n cube. And as I said, you may remember, I can write for you, natural log, you may compare with one, it's always greater, or, you may also compare with n. I can draw it one more time for you. This is natural log. That's one. Of course, this starts from e. This is not n, it's one. This is natural log of n, that's one. And this is n. That we can see n is definitely bigger. Yeah, we may try to, to do this. So in first, let's try Okay, I can say, I can compare, I'm comparing with one. Oh, that's okay. One is actually less, that means ln is greater. But what we know about the infinite series, one over n cube, we learned today that this is, uh, p value is three, greater than one, this is convergent. Everything what is bigger, I don't know. I can't really conclude. That means this comparison is not working. Okay, I will remove this and let's compare ln of n with n. And we can see, since everything is placed in the numerator, numerator is greater, the whole fraction is bigger. Okay, and now let's investigate. Actually, I should put my proper sigma sign. Okay, I have n over n cubed, which I, I will end up having one over n squared after simplifying, and this is convergent. I still have my original formula. That means this one is convergent because the p value is greater than one by the p series, and then everything what is smaller is also convergent. I can put my conclusion that my infinite series is convergent by direct comparison test. And now it's really important. We will always ask you what you're comparing with. That means you actually comparing with one over n squared. Because you just saw a minute ago, one over n cube didn't work. That means it's extremely important to show us what we comparing with, okay? Because the inequality and everything must work. Okay, and you can, of course, you can practice, you can compare, but this is nice, a nice uh, way to remember that for the natural log function. 
Okay, I will finish my session. Okay, that means thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining me this morning.